moments ago, fresh Pacific storm energy pushed hazardous surf to new extremes along the United States West Coast. Exactly as forecasters warned, wave periods now stretch to 20 seconds, amplifying every impact from California to Washington. These are not isolated surges and the risk is not fading. What has changed in the ocean to make today's waves so much more dangerous? Could this escalation be just the start? High surf warnings are now in effect along much of the west coast, stretching from Southern California to the far corners of Washington. The latest buoy reports confirm what coastal communities have feared. Waves are not only staying large, they are growing more powerful with each passing hour. Offshore sensors west of San Francisco and Monterey are registering significant wave heights above 15 feet, with dominant periods now holding steady between 16 and 20 seconds. In Oregon and Washington, buoys near Newport and Grays Harbor echo the same pattern, with seas running 15 to 18 feet and long period swells rolling in from the northwest. These numbers are not just statistics. A dominant period of 15 to 20 seconds means the energy packed into each wave is far greater than what most beaches experience during a typical winter storm. Instead of short, choppy breakers that lose steam near the surf line, these waves arrive in organized sets, each one pushing farther up the sand, over rocks, and across parking lots. The impact is immediate. Lifeguards and emergency crews are closing access to jetties and exposed promenades. Local authorities are urging everyone to stay off seawalls and out of beach parking lots. The warnings are unambiguous. Large, long period waves can sweep people off rocks and beaches with little or no warning. Coastal hazard advisories have been extended and upgraded in response to the new data as meteorologists track wave energy that refuses to dissipate. These are not isolated surges. The ocean is now delivering repeated sets of powerful waves, each one reinforced by fresh storm energy flowing across the Pacific. For those living near the shoreline, the numbers coming in from the buoys are a clear signal that the risk is not fading. It is building. Officials stress that even experienced beachgoers and boaters should avoid the water until these warnings are lifted. The combination of sustained high surf and long period swells is now the dominant force shaping conditions up and down the coast. The latest measurements leave no doubt the situation is growing more dangerous not less. For communities from Santa Cruz to Cannon Beach, and from Monterey Bay to the Olympic Peninsula, the message is the same. This is a time for caution, not curiosity. Wind blowing across the Pacific for days at a time does more than just rough up the water surface. When a winter storm forms far offshore, its strongest winds sweep across hundreds, sometimes over a thousand miles of open ocean. This stretch, known as the storm's fetch, acts like a runway. The longer and steadier the wind, the more energy it pours into the sea, building waves that start as chaotic chop, but soon organize into swells. These swells, unlike wind-blown waves near the coast, travel in tight formation, carrying the storm's power toward land, even after the weather system itself has moved on. As the swells leave the storm behind, the shorter, weaker waves fade away. What remains are the long period waves, those with intervals of 15, 18, even 20 seconds between crests. These waves travel faster and straighter, losing little energy as they cross thousands of miles. By the time they reach the continental shelf, they are no longer a jumble, but a series of powerful pulses, each one loaded with energy from its journey across the Pacific. A coastal oceanographer explains it simply, the ocean is like a conveyor belt for storm energy. The longer the fetch and the stronger the wind, the more organized and energetic the swell becomes. When multiple storms form back to back, their wave trains can overlap, stacking energy on top of energy. This is why the coast does not get a break. Each new storm pulse arrives before the last one fades, creating a compounding effect. The result is a shoreline that takes repeated hits not just from one event, but from a series of powerful wave sets. Energy builds and accumulates with each passing storm. When these long period swells reach shallow water near the coast, 
Their energy has nowhere to go but up and forward. The waves grow taller, slow down, and surge farther inland. This process, known as run-up, means that a 16-foot wave with a 20-second period can climb much higher and travel much farther than a shorter, choppier wave of the same height. High tide amplifies this effect, allowing waves to overtop sea walls, flood parking lots, and surge into harbors, sometimes with little warning. Run-up can turn a single wave into a widespread hazard. The invisible chain from storm to shore is not just about distance. It is about how the ocean stores and delivers energy, turning distant wind into a force that can reshape beaches, test seawalls, and threaten lives. Each new storm adds another layer of energy, and with no pause between pulses, the hazards multiply. The coastline is left exposed to a relentless cycle of impact, with each wave set carrying the memory of storms that began thousands of miles away. Waves are now overtopping seawalls, flooding promenades, and pushing seawater across parking lots from San Francisco to Seaside. In Santa Cruz, barricades line West Cliff Drive, where city crews have blocked off stretches of the road after repeated surges sent water and debris onto the pavement. Along the Oregon coast, police tape and warning signs close off jetties and beach access points in Newport and Lincoln City as breakers sweep over the rocks and make the shoreline too dangerous to approach. Harbor masters up and down the coast are on high alert. In Newport, the entrance bar is off limits to small craft, with surging water and strong currents making it unsafe for even experienced crews. The story is similar in Crescent City and Gray's Harbor. Harbor authorities have posted advisories and the U.S. Coast Guard has restricted crossings until conditions improve. Inside the harbors themselves, Long period swells set boats rocking and snap mooring lines, while floating docks strain against their anchors. Mooring lines are breaking and vessels are being pushed against pilings. Real-time monitoring is the backbone of these decisions. Offshore buoys managed by the National Data Buoy Center track wave height, dominant period and direction, relaying data every few minutes. As significant wave heights hold above 15 feet and dominant periods stretch past 17 seconds, forecasters at the National Weather Service update warnings and coordinate with local officials. Forecasters stress that these numbers can change quickly. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration's network of sensors, models, and satellite feeds confirms that the ocean's energy is not letting up. Confirms is the word from analysts. Each buoy report is more than a number. It is a signal that the risk onshore remains high. For coastal communities, these readings shape every closure and every warning. The data and the people who watch it stand between the public and a sea that refuses to calm. Confusion spreads quickly when dramatic wave footage appears online. Clips of powerful surf, sometimes labeled tsunami or mini tsunami, circulate widely on social media and fuel rumors that a seismic event is to blame. But the science tells a different story. Tsunamis are triggered by sudden movements of the seafloor, such as earthquakes, landslides, and volcanic eruptions, and they travel as long, low waves with periods lasting several minutes. In contrast, the waves now battering the west coast are driven by wind energy from distant Pacific storms. Their periods typically range from 15 to 20 seconds, and they arrive in visible sets, not as a sudden, sustained surge. NOAA and the National Weather Service confirm there is no tsunami alert in effect. Specialized deep ocean sensors known as DART buoys monitor for the telltale signs of a tsunami, and those systems remain quiet. Instead, the active warnings come from high surf and coastal hazard advisories, updated as new storm energy reinforces the swell. Meteorologists stress that these storm-driven waves can be just as dangerous, capable of overtopping seawalls, flooding roads, and sweeping people from rocks or beaches. The threat is immediate and real, even without a seismic trigger. With more Pacific storms forecast in the days ahead, the public is urged to stay back from jetties, cliffs, and harbor entrances. Barricades and closure signs are not suggestions. 
They are direct responses to the hazards measured by real-time monitoring. The message from authorities is clear. Respect the warnings, avoid the water's edge, and let the experts track the next pulse of energy moving across the ocean. Today, the West Coast faces rising waves, not just from storms, but from a changing climate that fuels them. As scientists confirm longer, stronger swells, coastal risk is no longer rare or distant. It is the new normal. The shoreline is moving, and our response must move with it.